everybody and welcome back to my channel it's walanda so in today's video i'm going to be talking about how to find your style i know for a lot of people it's hard to figure out what fits you physically fits your style fits your character fits your personality when it comes to what you wear or what you're carrying so i just wanted to make this video in order to like guide somebody anybody to really figure out what they like i feel like today's tips it really could go for anything whether you're purchasing a shirt a shoe a hat but this topic really directed towards finding your style when it comes to designer bags so i know there's a lot of people who are getting their feet wet when it comes to designer luxury purchases these purchases are very expensive and I've seen too many times people purchase a lot of things and they just tend to return it because it's not their style anymore. Granted, I am aware that your style changes over time and that's totally fine, but there are people who literally purchase things and just two weeks later, they're trying to sell it or they don't like it because it doesn't fit their style. And I'm like, girl, you didn't know this two weeks before. So I decided to come with, I think about six or seven tips about how on how to find your style and just ways to avoid making major mistakes because like i said these things are extremely pricey and a lot of the times you do not get your money worth on a resale market and you end up getting a l for reselling such a pricey item so let's avoid all of that and let's figure out what our style is now so we don't have to go through that headache to try to resell or to lose money on our purchases so if you have not yet go ahead and follow me on instagram at importer underscore chocolate i have styling pictures on there <laughs> yeah leave all of that down below all right so this specific category i want it to be really directed towards how to find your forever bag collection i didn't start growing my bag designer bag collection until 2020 when the pandemic hit so from 2020 it's literally been two years since i started and i have racked up a good collection that fits me. I will be doing a designer bag collection or handbag collection soon, so keep on the lookout for that. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel so you can get notified when that upload is up. I am very, very satisfied with what I have. And honestly, I feel like these tips I'm about to present are ways that have me very content and satisfied with my collections that I have. Every piece that I purchased literally was thought out. You know, it's not as though I went out to run and get it just cause like it popped in my head. So these tips would definitely help uh, curate your style. Now, the first tip I wanna say is don't start buying designer bags young. Although there are some people who literally are born into it, some people, their mothers, their parents, their generations and generations before them is all about designer and, you know, have accumulated or have purchased them before for those who haven't for those you are first generation designer purchasers i feel as though anyone under i want to say 25 26 should not really be purchasing any designer bag now these opinions are my opinions so take them or leave them <laughs> either or but i say this because honestly like i said i didn't start purchasing till 2020 2020 i was 27 i'm 28 now yeah i'm sure so 2020 i was 27 years old and i feel like i literally started to realize my own being started to be comfortable in my style i was always comfortable in my style but just be more um less experimental in my style because all high school college like young adult age you those are the times for you to figure out what you like and buying a designer bag where you are spending mad money thousands and thousands of dollars on on a regular or even if it's once a year i feel like in that stage that age you are really not 
knowing your style for sure. Like those are your experimental ages. So I feel as though what really helped me was getting the inspired looking bags, not replicas, not the fakes, not super fakes, inspired looking bags. So the bags that are on Ego, Fashion Nova, like high, fast fashion type of bags that looks the same as one of the bags that are from the designer boutiques that you like. I feel like it's best to go ahead and purchase those and see if you like it, see if it fits your style, see if over time you don't get tired of it because it's easy to get a bag off of there that's for like 24, 20, I don't even know how much bags on there cost anymore. I haven't purchased any bags in so long on that fast fashion bags. But getting bags out under, I'm gonna say $50, is way more um, sustainable, is way more doable than going out and buying a designer bag that is a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars where in a couple of years you you deem it's not your style anymore so you want to go ahead and resell it so i feel like when you start off purchasing very young you don't know your style you don't know like what you like you don't even know i mean no one knows what's you know gonna they're gonna like in the future by all means it's okay for people to um, change their style over time but when you are that young and when you are more into the trends you switch so much so buying a designer bag one month and then the next month or six months later deciding it's not for you because it's not in trend anymore or it's just not what you want I feel as though that's that's you are going to be wasting a lot of money doing that to be honest it's just going to be money down the drain so just don't start off young <laughs> okay like I said I started off at 27 and I am so, so, so happy that I started at that age because 18, 19, like in my teens, in my early 20s, even mid 20s, I loved to change it up every other day, you know, which is a good thing for that age, but it's not a good thing when you're buying very pricey bags and clothes. It's just not good. The next tip is... Don't always try to go and get the it bag or the trendy bag. It doesn't even matter how old you are. You could be 18 or you could be 48. Like everybody moves on their own accord mentally. So there are some people who are 48 and who are still just after it bags, bags of the season because they're just so, they don't know their style. So I feel as though sticking to classic bags, no, like I said, no matter what age, is the best bet. So I feel, hmm, let me do this. Remember, this is to build a forever bag collection. You feel me? If you are the type of person who is just quirky and love quirky stuff, that's going to be your classic. You will always be quirky mentally, so get your quirky bags. That is your classic. But if you're somebody who is way more reserved and don't like the flashy bags or don't like certain bold colors or certain fabrics, then stick to the classics. I feel as though classics will always remain classic. It's a classic. I know a lot of people see this as being safe, but if you don't want to get into the hassle of reselling or switching out bags all the time or losing a lot of money every time you try to sell a bag, then sticking to the classes will give you a good enough return of investment if you go to sell it. I'm not saying all classes because like I said, a lot of bags, you do not get your money worth when you go to resell it. But there's a good number of bags that are classes that you will either break even or get a profit off. If you do not break even, then it will be a little bit off. It just depends on the style of the bag. But trying to go off and run to get every it bag is a disaster. And I've seen it over and over and over and over again when I'm watching other people bag collections or I've sold this bag and why I've sold it type of videos. I'm like, that bag just came out and you went to go purchase it. You didn't like it. And it was obviously because it was a trendy it bag. So you felt like you had to go get it. 
So I just avoid trying to step into those waters of the brands pushing out it bags because honestly nowadays there is always going to be an it bag. There there used to be it bags of the season, right? Not anymore. Or like there used to be it bags of the year too or it bags of the decade. Not anymore. There's it bags of the week. It bags of the day to be honest. That's how much these brands are producing product. So don't get into the hype of trying to get every it bag that is on your face on your face <laughs> that is in your face on social media all the time and being that we have social media you see them all the time so you think everybody has them but that's not the case so stick to your style and avoid all the it bags unless it truly truly represents you as a person the next tip i have is control yourself control that fomo and impulse buy everything you see on social everything you see advertised does not have to be bought that impulse buy will definitely lead you into purchasing items that you initially never liked before and you just bought it because um you were at you were at that store that time and it was right in front of you you probably never seen it in person before but you've seen it all the time in videos or in pictures on Instagram and you're like oh my gosh I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and buy it because it's an it bag like it's right here everybody keeps saying it's sold out you can't find it anywhere I'm gonna go ahead and get it even though that is not your style and the FOMO like <laughs> Listen, don't ever have a fear of missing out on a bag because there are secondhand pre-love market. You know, it will pop up back soon. So the FOMO, just, just let it go. I would have to say, give yourself about three to six months of doing your research on the bag. I know when I am obsessed with a particular style, particular item, I will research the mess out of this bag. Like I will scrub the internet to figure out everybody's review, everybody's um, unboxings, different colors and all of that. So I understand we are going to be obsessed with something that we really really like in the initial phase you know that puppy dog love but give it a good three to six months and I've done this before many many times with some bags see if you really love the bag after six months because honestly between three to six months you will have so much you have to pay for either bills other expenses gifts whatever so you definitely have transactions flowing in and out of your account so once that three to six months period hit and you go back to check do i really like this or like do i really want to spend my money on this now it gives you a time to reflect and to just step back and not to be so obsessed with an item do as much research as you can deep dive into to the product the product that you want and I feel like everybody should everybody should not just close their eyes blindly and just purchase something especially of high value like that I know it may sound very long three to six months and I'm pretty sure it is long depending on how much you shop but it really really works because there are times I do so much research I'm like obsessed with this bag and I step back I pay other things I spend my money on other things and I come back I'm like you know what I really don't care to purchase this anymore it's not giving me that it doesn't spark joy for me anymore so definitely definitely try to step back between three to six months revisit after that to see if you still like the item. My next tip is a learn to admire from afar. I've definitely learned how to do this. It's another world out here in the luxe designer space. Like I feel like fast fashion has its own world. Luxe designer has their own world as well. Like every space is different. And once you step into that space, you could definitely just get swallowed up if you're not careful. So I've definitely learned to love a lot of things from afar. A lot of these designer brands are pushing product out all the time. Like Chanel has so many drops in a year is ridiculous. I didn't know they had so many. And I think they overlap somehow. Like I, I don't know the collections, but I know it's just too many. Once you just bought your piece, there are other pieces that are going to come out 
other pieces will always come out. It's not going to stop. They're a business. The only time it will stop is if they run out of business. And if that happens, I'm not talking about Chanel directly. I'm just talking about any brand. If that happens, there's always another brand that will take its space. Like, that's just how it is. All of these products that are being pushed out and, you know, this, like I said, not even only in the luxe world, Zara, H&M, all of them, all of them hauls, Shein, all of them, they will always be pushing out product. There has to be a time where you take self-control for yourself and just start to admire things from afar. I enjoy watching hauls and be like, oh girl, yes, that is cute for you. I love that for you and not think, oh my goodness, I have to get this. This is for me. I need to get this. And then the next one, I need to get this. I need to get this. Like it's, it's a lot. You know, and that's how you get into that hole and just realize, oh my goodness, I definitely don't know what my style is because I'm over here getting things from everybody, from every collection, from everybody who's showing me whatever. And it could be quite confusing. My next one is a very, very, very important. And that is to know and curate your keyword your style. I feel as though a lot of people are just getting caught up into somebody else's style. And all of these bags that are sold because they don't like them, they fell out of love with them. They were trying to mimic somebody else's style. They see a um, their favorite influencer or their best friend rocking something that is gorgeous and even though even though they know it's not their style they will try to go and purchase it because so and so have it or because it is popular or because it is the it bag right now curate your own style there will be times where you have to figure out what you like and try things out that you you want to see if you you know if it sparks joy if it if you will love it and it's okay to do that but do that with less pricier items so it's not a waste so for example I honestly do not like um, Bottega Veneta that's just not my style like I just don't care for the designs just about anything unless I mean if I see something that I like on there then and I'm willing to purchase. I will come back and tell y'all because anything that brand pushes out is, I don't know what the shoes are called. I'll try to put a picture on here for the whole craze of this type of shoe that was going out, I think 2020, 2021, and I think it's still popular now, but I'm, I'm not sure how popular. Um, everybody was getting it. Every unboxing was... I already know it wasn't my style, but I was like, let me go ahead and try it. Let me see if I like it. Instead of me going and purchasing the actual shoe, I went ahead and purchased the Inspire one from Ego. And honestly, I purchased a good, I want to say three or four different styles, the same similar look. And I just realized those shoes are not for me. I think I have one that I actually really like, but it's not even the same because the, the heel is chunkier and and the color is like a, a beautiful chocolate brown. It's not even here with me. It's back in Orlando. So I need to find those shoes to be shipped back here with me. But um, it was just a regular mule. It wasn't the mule Bottega Veneta style. And I realized... I don't like any of these shoes and I don't wear them. I probably wore out of those three, four pairs of shoes, two of them a handful of times. I could literally count on my hand how many times I wore it because it just wasn't my style. But I am glad I went to try the inspired ones, the dupes, instead of cashing out all of that money for shoes that I may not, probably not going to wear like. I give props for those people who de de deviate, <laughs> there you go, deviate into their own little corner and do their own thing and not just going where the mass is going. It is so much refreshing when I see something new. I'm like, oh my goodness, I've never heard of that. Thanks, sis, for putting me on. I like it. Or, oh, I never heard of that. It's not for me, but I love that for you, girl. Like, I enjoy learning new things and just not following the herd. You yeah, already know how I am. So I definitely advise you guys to curate your style. Just know what you like.
Once you know what you like, then you could truly create that forever. Bag collection, shoe collection, jewelry collection, insert uh, collection here. <laughs> and my last topic is definitely for people who think that it's just okay to resell and it's just so easy to resell and like bags are investments. Now, I said this when I first started. I think when I first got my first designer bag, bags are investments. And I can look back and be like, girl, you are naive. And I can only say this because like, I didn't know really um, the luxury market. And I really was just going off of what I was hearing other people saying, even though I've never resold a bag. I did purchase my first bag off the secondhand market, but I didn't really put two and two together like, girl, you're looking for a deal. So if you are getting less than what the retail, the, the retail is, then that person lost money. But I didn't put those two and two together. I'm over here just trying to get a good deal, get the most authentic good deal out there. So I could truly say I was definitely naive, definitely naive when it comes to bags being an investment. Granted, there are bags that are investments truly. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me tell you what the tip is. I don't even know if I told you the actual tip topic is. So it's don't look at your bag as an investment or for resale. So like I was saying, there are bags out there that, and there's a very select few, very select few bags out there that you will definitely get money or break even for what you purchase, but it's not a lot of them. And it's not the trendy ones, to be honest. So if you are already the type of person where I mentioned earlier, you like trendy bags or you more focusing on getting the it bag because it's, it's high and popping right now at that moment, then do not look into trying to resell your bag and getting your money's worth out of it. Because like I said, I was definitely naive when it comes to resale value. And although I've never sold any of my bags to this day, because I truly put in thought in all of my bags and I truly, truly love what I purchased and I don't see myself selling them anytime soon. Now I could definitely say that bags, my bags are an investment for sure. But it's not an investment as in resale investment. I'm getting my money back investment. At the top of my head, I could think I only have one bag at the moment. If I resell it, I will break even or get way more for it because it's a popping bag right now. It is my black Coco Chanel in the caviar champagne gold hardware in the size small. That one, I've seen it on a fashion file. I've seen it on um, the real real for way more than what I paid for. One, because I did purchase it last year and there have been many price increases since. And two, I did purchase it in Europe. I purchased it in South of France. So I already had that taken out because I purchased it overseas. So I'm definitely, I would definitely get my money's worth with that back today. Now, I don't know about in the future. It's popping right now, so I know I'll get my money's worth right now. But it's not a lot of bags can, that can do that. So when I see people that are buying trendy bags and just willy-nilly um, purchasing because it's it, it came out, it's all in my face, and then don't like it and decide to resell it, it's like, girl, you could have really avoided all of that if you just step, step back, curated your own style, and really purchased things that you are in love with and not just infatuated with because like I said all bags are not investments now when I say investments for me I mean investment into my style investments into my that yeah my personal style what I like to carry what I like to be seen if if <laughs> what I like to be seen with or in that's what I say it's an investment to me. And I feel like all of these tips literally go hand in hand with each other. Once you don't start young and are more mature into your style, more stand fast in it, you'll be able to curate it and not see your bags 
as in resale investments and you won't be tempting to have that FOMO impulse buy syndrome and you'll learn to admire from afar. Yeah, they all just go hand in hand in hand. And the thing about me is I do not like clutter. And I do not like holding things that I don't wear, I don't use anymore, just about everything, yeah. I, I wanna say a good, mm, now, a good 99.9% .9 of the things I have, they are used. They are worn, they're not just sitting there collecting dust. So I've definitely learned to create my forever uh, style when it comes to clothes, jewelry, bags, even like hair products, something very simple like that, where I have my forever, well, as long as those products work continuously and my hair doesn't change up or the formula of those products doesn't change up, I have my forever routine when it comes to just just about everything. My makeup as well. Like I know what my skin likes, doesn't like. I look good in colors, all of that. So once you start to hone into your style and hone into you, then you will definitely cre create that forever insert item collection. So I hope this helped somebody out there to sit back and just realize what they need to buy, what they don't need to buy. I mean, all of these are not needs, they're all wants, but what they prefer buying and not really get into the whole, oh, I have to have this now um, phase. So yes, with that being said, I thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.